Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are doing a reading for all signs. Um, I'm going to do each individual sign. They're just going to be short little messages and it's really for September. Um, though again, you know, divine timing. I feel like it'll just reach you when it's meant to. Um, so we're just going to take like three or four cards from for each sign. And um, I am going to also take one major arcana for each sign just to get like the overall energy. Um, Mother Mary also. And then we'll use two different decks to clarify. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the reading because, you know, I think I can only record for so long on my camera. Um, but we are going to start with Aries. So what I want to do is go ahead and give the major arcanas a shuffle. And then we are going to, okay, that feels like Aries. Hmm. Aries, you have the Hierophant. You know, the Hierophant is about your belief system. Um, yeah, I felt the Hierophant in a lot of the readings for September, and I have to fe I have to say, in most of the readings, I felt like it was a blessing, like like this per like you know like a blessing is coming your way. So I like this for you, um, but it is number five, so it can talk about like questioning your beliefs. You know, are you living according to your morals, your standards, or you know, have you lowered your vibration to be with another? That type of energy. Also Carter Taurus. Uh, but I'm not really reading them as people. Um, and we are going to start with the Lumerous Tarot. So I'm going to give it a couple shuffles. And I am just going to take off the top. And that's why I'm shuffling them. They are pre-shuffled, by the way. So, Aries. September. Don't forget to check out your monthly. It's already done. And this month, what I did is I did opposite signs. Um, and I found it so interesting. So we have the Hierophant. Let's go ahead. We have interesting the Seven of Wands. Let me actually bring the lid down here. Um, Aries, this is about standing your ground. You know, it can be somewhat of a defensive energy, like where you're, you feel like you're defending off attacks. You know, I often feel like this is the energy of like, I put one fire out, another fire begins. Um, but I do have a feeling, you know, it's funny because I was just going to say seven planets have been in retrograde and this is a number seven. So I feel like some of it can be energetic. We have the strength card. Um, Cardalio, but this is really about looking within, um, overcoming your own obstacles, you know, like, like what comes, you know, like what maybe stops you from, I don't know, creating the life that you want to create. And I feel like ultimately, you know, when we do this, when we really look within ourselves, what we find is our courage. Our sense of power. And then, well, hello, Nine of Cups. So I kind of feel like you've been in um, a little bit of a difficult situation. You know, um, maybe one of the things you've been learning, especially with the Hierophant as your major arcana here, is, you know, who am I fighting for? What am I fighting for? Is it worth the fight? Am I being drawn into someone else's energy instead of living, you know, my own vibration? The Nine of Cups is about inner harmony. And I love it's right next to the strength card. So again, when I look within and it may talk about like, have I been, you know, and this is your energy sometimes, you know, where you do want to put out other people's fires, but you know, standing your ground, but what am I standing my ground against? Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm looking at these wands and there is a lot of new growth on these wands. So the nine of cups, I feel like, 
I feel like this is just talking about your own vibration, looking within, you know, maybe you're trying to help certain people, um, but maybe it's just not paying off, but maybe it wasn't meant to. You know, the strength card has the infinity sign above it, as above, so below. This is also about the Nine of Cups is also about fulfillment of a wish. But in a way, I feel like this is you really starting to love your life again. There may have been some type of energy that just wasn't serving you. Let's go ahead and take the Gilded Tarot. And I'm going to give him a shuffle. And... um. These will be time stamped, by the way. I'm actually going to give them a cut. And I just want to look. So, hmm, interesting. Six of Swords. That's probably why I was feeling the energy of, like, you know, what am I standing my ground against? You know, am I, am I in this energy of, like, defending myself against someone that maybe... I don't know. Like, I want to say, doesn't feel worth it. You know, there could be some type of energy around you that keeps you in a defensive type of mode. But I don't feel like that's what you want. You know, the Six of Swords talks about toxic energy. But this is you leaving that toxic energy. Some of you may have just had the realization that, again, someone or people... Just, you know, just kept bringing their toxic energy and you kept defending it, you know, well, defending yourself against it, I should say. But this is actually moving away from it. I feel like this is a pretty bold move. Um, and I feel like it does take courage to, like, jump in this boat and, and say no more, no more, no more. Let's take one more. Look at this. Seven of Pentacles. So to me, the Seven of Pentacles is like your tree of life. And I feel like what it's saying, first of all, it is the message in this card is patience. But it's patience for one of these seeds to come to fruition. Um, you know, it is coming also over that Nine of Cups. So I feel like it's saying that without this movement away from the toxicity, maybe one of these seeds really couldn't like manifest. But now, as you start moving away from that energy, again, the Hierophant, questioning your own belief system. You know, am I defending someone um, who, I don't know, just feels like a waste of my time, to be honest. That's just what I'm picking up. And then the Nine of Cups, a fulfillment of a wish. Well, the Seven of Pentacles, first patience, right? But I feel like it could be divine having patience um, on us, waiting for us to jump in that ship, leave that toxicity, you know, question um, my own energy, my own belief system, going deep within. And I feel like ultimately, what does that do? It feels like it brings great rewards your way. You know, I often feel the Seven of Pentacles is like a seed of intent, like our soul planted these seeds before we even came into this lifetime. So this feels like the right time. Again, that Nine of Cups is a fulfillment of a wish. However, first and foremost, it's about finding that inner harmony. And that's what the Strength card helps you to do. So I feel like, um, and this could be talking about August, you know, and, and even before that, you know, we have sevens on the board. So it could have started like in July. But I feel like this is saying, this is like, re, like you're regaining your power here. Um, but your real truth also. And it just feels good. So, inner harmony. That's what you're seeking this month. And then when that inner harmony is found, it feels like then it's time for certain seeds to then manifest. And again, it is a fulfillment of a wish. So whatever this seed may consist of, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Okay. So we are gonna we are gonna keep these rather short. And 
and we're just going to go in line. Um, so I'm going to stick with the loom. Oh, by the way, this is the Loomer's Tro. I don't know if I said that. So I'm going to stick with that for a minute and let's go ahead and move on to Taurus. Interesting, we just had your major arcana. So let's go ahead and go ahead and get your major arcana. Okay. Well, hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. Um, you know, the lovers showed up on a lot of September's readings. And, um, you know, it just brings me back to January where I was doing, um, you know, I was doing the readings for the year. And I just felt like a lot of soulmates were really going to connect this year. So this is the card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. But I feel like it also speaks about chemistry, like undeniable. This is the angel's influence over the lovers. Okay. Well, hello, star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. Some of you may be manifesting, or let's just say the universe is manifesting the right person for you. Maybe the perfect person for you. This is about your hopes, so though, your dreams, your wishes. And I feel like with the star, first of all, this person's naked. And I feel like they're naked because they've learned to be like 100% who they are, their authentic self. Right? Especially if I want to manifest love into my life. I don't want to have to wear any mask. Like, I want someone to love me for who I am. But it is working hand in hand with divine. Okay. Also card of Aquarius, by the way, the Empress. Beautiful. So this is someone who, you know, Empress's first message is to keep your heart open, loving, nurturing. This also is very creative energy. You know, I have a feeling that someone may be heading your way that, you know, I feel like the star card is the wishing of it. And I may not even have a certain person in mind, but I feel like the Empress, the one who receives, like we all receive epiphanies, but this is someone who, like her intuition is completely open, right? She trusts her intuition above all. Some of you could certainly be like, you know, you becoming a mother. Um, and I often feel in the Empress's energy that for some of you too, it's a mother figure. You know, like a mother who has crossed um, a grandmother, a big sister type of energy where they're helping you to manifest. You know, they now become one of your main spirit guides. We have the hangman. It's like, hold on, you move too fast. All right. So the hangman, you know, the hangman's seeking wisdom, spiritual wisdom on my next steps on this physical plane. Interesting that where the illumination is, is very close to the lovers. So this may just say, like, put that intention out there, right? Especially if you are looking for love. Um, and of course, you could have someone in particular in mind, but it could just speak about love in general. The hangman is, you know, another energy of patience. Um, but I do feel like, you know, the right people come at the right time. All right, let's go ahead and take a couple major arcanas. Over that, we have the Page of Cups. You know, I feel like this is your inner child. Maybe this is talking about really learning how to open your heart, like make sure your heart is open, like the Empress. Right? She's loving and nurturing, but she's also very powerful. She's gentle and powerful at the same time. Why? How can I be that way? Because, again, I trust my intuition. If anything comes towards me that is of a lower vibration, she's going to know it. She's going to know it. So this hangman may be like part of like you learning to truly open yourself up to love. 
you know, I feel like the Page of Cups is a very playful type of energy also, like playful in love. But it is about like really learning to love again. And first it starts with like, like loving oneself, understanding that you are enough. And then when, well, hello, Knight of Swords over the hangman. So the hangman, communication, and this knight is literally coming in over the hangman. Some of you may have been waiting for this communication. And, you know, this may just be the right time. And I feel like you do have a lot to do with that. Again, am I open to love? You know, this totally feels like a love reading to me. But it is about your wishes, number one. But also having patience, you know, and I feel like making sure, you know, let's put it a different way. Let's say I, I really want love in my life. Then I have to be able to give love at the same time. You know, that's the law of attraction. I have to be able to give what it is that I want. So whatever I want in the star you know, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, and then the lovers down here, am I also able to give? And then I feel like, and then some type of communication comes in. Let's just take one more over that. Six of Pentacles. Well, that is the fine art of give and take. And, you know, this is very empathetic and compassionate type energy, much like the Empress. But part of what I may have been learning in life is... You know, maybe I do have the tendency to like give and I don't allow myself to receive or I haven't received and I just accepted that. So really learning that fine art of give and take. I also feel like because I'm really looking at this Knight of Swords, it's saying that this, pe this person is compassionate. This person is giving. This is someone who is more than happy to give uh, a hand up. Not a hand out, but a hand up. You know, like, I'm, I'm more than happy to help someone. But I want to make sure that who I help is, you know, again, using it to better their life. Some of you may have come from some difficult love relationships. And, you know, you might have learned a lot. The one thing I feel like you probably learned is what you don't want in love. You know, and maybe I learned that, you know, I kept giving and giving and I wasn't receiving. I feel like this Knight of Swords kind of feels like an angel's blessing, to be honest. And maybe for some of you, it is like a mother figure. But when the time is right, the time will be right. Interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead. And let's go ahead. I'm just going to stay with this deck for a little while. Gemini. Well, Gemini, you just showed in Tars' reading. So some of you may be connected in that way. Look at this. Well, I don't know. I feel like some of you may be connected. So we have the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. Manifesting them. Again, naked. The ability to be who I truly am. Not wearing any mask. Accepting who I am. All parts of myself. You know, we don't want to shoot for perfection because... Nobody here on earth is perfect, and that's just the way it is. It's the way we were born. But look how it kind of ties you back. All right. We have the moon, Carter Pisces, ruler of cancer. Um, the moon can talk about uncertainties, but it's also very dreamy type energy. You know, I feel like when I see the moon in some readings, I feel like it's connecting to someone like in my dream system. We have the death card. 
Carter Scorpio, a lot of water. Um, but this is about endings so that there can be a rebirth in your life. This is a closing of a door. You know, and maybe it's required that a door be closed so that whatever this wishes can then come true. It's part of the rebirth. And I do feel like we have to learn to be comfortable with that. You know, like chapters are meant to end. Doesn't mean like love is always meant to end because I think sooner or later we do find that that one special person doesn't guarantee us anything, right? That's why, again, this person being naked is important to me because like I know who I am now and, you know, no excuses for who I am. But I'm not being, I don't mean that in an egotistical way. So, closing of a door. Some of you may be questioning whether you should be closing this door. But the death card would say, as soon as you do, there will be a rebirth. Look at this, Six of Wands. This is the energy of victory and success. So, it lies on the other side of the death card. It is part of this rebirth. Some of you, you're, it's it's you trying to really trust your own abilities. Um, you know, in the Six of Wands, they feel like other people are really looking up to you. But they're looking up to you because of your own action steps. Like being bold enough to take these actions. And again, the moon opening this reading up. Maybe I don't know where it's going to end up, you know. Um, but if, if I'm looking for some type of confirmation, like, will I have success in whatever lies within the star card for you? The answer is yes. Not only that, but then I feel like, again, other people looking up to you for, you know, those, those bold action steps that you've taken for closing that door. And that feels like a wish coming true. All right, let's look over the moon. Seven of Cups, that makes sense. Um, is also the card of Cancer, by the way. But this is really trying to decide something on an emotional level. And it can certainly represent like past energy that makes it hard for me to make a decision right now, right here. But again, it's due to past energy. That's why that door needs to be closed. And I feel like the person who's naked in the star card, let's just say like anybody was anybody was telling you that, you know, you can't be successful what, if, of the things that you're thinking of doing or if it's really relating to love, like no one's going to love you, you know, period. It, it, it's just not true. It's not true. And it is about you making that ultimate decision. And I feel like the decision is whether to close a door so that I can allow this new rebirth to take place. The devil. Card of Capricorn. This can talk about temptations. You know, some of you could have been certainly tempted to like um, energy that's just not serving you anymore because the death card, you know, it is the ending of a chapter. It is a closing of a door. But, and you know, a lot of times in the, in the devil's card, um, I always feel sorry for Capricorn. Like, you know, I'm making my own tarot cards and I don't have the devil. Um, but it can certainly represent, you know, energy that I kept getting tempted back to. And maybe I really had to learn who I was, believe in myself, and then make that bold move. And literally, it's telling you that, you know, you will be able to claim victory over this. This can be an illusionary energy of... Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I can't succeed. But everything's telling you the opposite. You just need to trust in that. Now, some of you, this could literally be a Capricorn. 
you know, it really depends on what's, you know, what's part of your wishes. So, the moon, uncertainties, yet dreamy at the same time. The death card, closing of a door, and then a rebirth. You know, when one door closes, another door will always open. And I also love this as energy if, like, I've been learning from, let's say, some of the difficult things in my life. I have been learning. I know the energy that I've been tempted to. So I need to think about my own vibration then. You know, the humanist part of us keeps pulling back, you know, these this energy of probably what's not good for us anyway. But it definitely looks like other people are, you know, going to, going to admire um, whatever action step you end up taking. Excuse me, just one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a knock at the door. Um, so, Gemini, you know, ultimately victorious energy. But it does seem like first the closing of a door. And it can just be an energetic door. Understand that. It doesn't always have to mean I'm closing a door to a person. But that closing of the door is what brings these dreams alive. Okay, Gemini. I don't know why I brought all my decks out and then I end up using one deck, but it seems it seems right. Like I'm just trusting uh, my intuition. It does feel right. Okay. Answer. Answer. The world. The next chapter. Very spiritual time in your life. I feel like the world represents that you have become this spiritual being. I mean, you already are a spiritual being, but it's the recognition of that. I love the world's energy. You know, it does signify something new. Um, but yet at the same time, it's like my spirituality is alive. It's alive. We have the Seven of Pentacles. So, one of those seeds. Two, I think it was Aries had that. One of these seeds coming to fruition. I mean, literally, you can see it's like one seed has fallen off the tree. It's ripe. Like the apple tree, right? When the apple's ripe, it sometimes will fall off the tree. This is someone who has nurtured these seeds, so. So. Um, and I often feel in the Seven of Pentacles, yes, it does talk about patience, but literally it feels like the seed is ready to manifest. And um, I do feel like, again, it's like your tree of life. Okay. We have the Four of Pentacles. A lot of Pentacles right there. And then... Your major arcana, the chariot. Beautiful. Some of you, it's like you're really starting to believe in yourselves. You know, it's like there may be something you've been thinking about, thinking about doing for a while. And this would signify that this is the right time. The chariot really represents unlimited potential. Um, but I've got to know that. I've got to trust that. The chariot's driven by your intentions not by the reins of the horses. So it's the intentions that I put out there. Again, think of the law of attraction, right? Especially if like my spirituality is just alive. You're trusting in yourself like never before. You know, the only thing with the four of pentacles, it can talk about a home. It can talk about you creating something. This is great energy for creating something from the home. But the Four of Pentacles can also speak about like holding on to something too tightly. And it can be like one's own ideas. You know, like not being open to um, another's. But I really feel like this is about really trusting yourself first and foremost. 
We have the King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. This is someone when they look at their life or they look at a situation, they look at the big picture. You know, as it relates to, um, it's funny, somebody left me a comment saying, you know, you say you know too much and it's like, ah, I try not to, but I don't know. Don't know if I can change that. Um, anyway, King of Pentacles, oh, wrong deck, hmm, interesting, the tower. Let's just take one more. Okay, the five of Pentacles, or I'm sorry, the five of Wands. So, I have a feeling that you know, much like the death card, this is also talking about, you know, the death of a certain situation, um, the ending of, you know, maybe this King of Pentacles. The Five of Wands speaks about a lot of drama, fighting. Nobody kind of backs down. And that's probably why, you know, it feels like that's that would result in a tower. I don't feel like this is what is or what is coming because the world, it, you know, this energy couldn't live in the world's energy. It's a completely different type of energy. So for some of you, it's like, you know, whoever this king of pentacles may be. Um, and I feel like I just want to look at that king. Well, death card over that. So closing of this door. But listen, you know, what's mirroring it? The five of wands in a tower. So there could have just been someone who, um, you know, when I think of earth, you know, with water, earth can, how do I say this? You know, I'm an earth sign. Um, earth can be restrictive when it comes to water. And it does feel like, you know, you know, could it be a rebirth with this person? I don't think so. And I say that because I feel like there's, there was just so much ego energy involved here. And again, where I felt that four pentacles where sometimes, you know, it can be restrictive energy. Um... We're not listening to other people's ideas, but I'm, I kind of don't feel like it's you. Because this king, again, is mirroring the tower and that five of wands. You know, another thing I feel this could certainly talk about if I've been dealing with people, a person where, you know, it had to be their way or the highway. Well, you may have chosen the highway. You may have closed the door to that. And listen, by doing so, it moves you into the chariot's energy, your natural energy. And it literally does open up a new chapter. And that's exactly what the death card would also represent. So, this king to me feels like someone, and you know, I'm saying a king, it could be a queen, and it doesn't have to be an earth sign. But I feel like this king could certainly carry like restrictive type energy. My way or the highway. Feels like someone could have fallen from grace. And I also feel in the five of wands, um, you know, if I'm expecting an apology, let's say, or someone to admit that they were wrong, I probably won't get it. But here's the thing. You probably don't need it because your spirituality feels alive. You understand now that it is through your intentions to bring about change, new beginnings, a death card, a rebirth, the chariot, unlimited potential, seven of pentacles. One of these seeds has literally fallen from the tree and is ready to manifest. Who do I want to bring along? And who do I need to leave behind? And 
cancer, I feel like for the majority of you, you know immediately who I'm talking about. And again, this king doesn't have to be an earth sign. It just feels to me like it'd be someone who probably has a hard time like expressing themselves emotionally. And I don't know how long you could live in that type of energy either. Okay. Well, let's keep going. So we are what? Cancer. Um, I feel like it's time to change decks. I don't know. I just feel it. So I'm going to go to the light seers, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a shuffle. And I really do this more for you. And we'll even give him a cut. Okay, well, it feels like that wants to be on top. So, Leo. The moon. The moon. Um, again, Carter Pisces, ruler of cancer, your neighbor, uncertainties, but also dreamy energy, by the way, I just moved to the light seers, I don't know if I said that, look at this, the high priestess, and it could represent the moon again, being like some things that like you're not sure about. And this would signify to trust your intuition. Like your intuition will never let you down. It's when we second guess it. You know, it reminds me of like on a game show where someone says the answer and then they second guess and it's like, ah, but they had the answer. I feel like our intuition is a gift. And I feel like, you know, it's like a muscle that can be strengthened. The more we use it, the more we trust it. Judgment. Your spiritual team. This is a call to the present moment. It's interesting. I feel like we have a little bit of a theme going here. You know, where there's a lot of rebirths, a lot of doors being closed, so new doors can be open. This is really the same type of energy. You know, if nothing else, this is this is you trusting your intuition, but trusting that, you know, your spiritual team, they're going to send you signs. And the more you can follow them, I feel like the better it just feels like your life is. This is someone definitely connecting to above. So judgment, I need you in the present moment. Why? Because this is where I send your signs. How will I know? You'll know intuitively. What if I don't know? What if I do second guess it? Ask for that sign to be sent again. You know, our spiritual team knows that there's going to be times that we second guess our intuition. And they also know that like, as we develop in life, so does our intuition. Wow, the magician, the manifester. You know, I feel like with the magician's energy, um, mirroring the the high priestess, your intuition, I feel like you can't go wrong. And then your spiritual team right in the middle of it. Like, what is it you want to manifest in your life? And then knowing you have the power to do that. Now, I should say, if I'm trying to manifest someone who doesn't really want me, then, you know, you need to know that. Um, interesting. Also, I, I felt this in quite a few of the readings for September, where I feel like a lot of the spirit, like a lot of our spiritual teams are connecting to us in our dream system 
And that may be because that's where we're more open. You know, during my waking hours, I may have so much going on. Um, you know, I'm not trusting. So we're going to reach you. We're going to reach you somehow, some way. And I feel like what they really want to tell you is that power you have to manifest. We have the two swords. So two swords is wearing a blindfold. And I feel like it's simply saying that for some of you, you may be having a hard time trusting your intuition. You know, maybe this rebirth the judgment is talking about. You're unsure, like, ah, oh, is it what I really want? Do I have this ability to manifest? Do I trust in myself? This blindfold is something I may be just fearful of facing. But I often feel when this person takes off this blindfold, the thing that I was fearing, it's, you know, it's like what I thought was going to be a mountain really is just a molehill. And I feel like it definitely serves us to face our fears. This can be blocking an opportunity. Um, but listen, I don't feel like forever because I feel like sooner or later, you are going to take off that blindfold. Because I feel like your spiritual team is going to get whatever signs they want to get to you. They're going to get them to you. Does that make sense? We have the five of swords. Interesting. So there may be someone in my life that I just don't want to, you know, like this is toxic energy. And it could certainly talk about, you know, one person or even a group of people who carry this type of energy. And it does become restrictive to you. You know, I might have bought it. I might have believed them. It is a five. So change, right? And I feel like this is saying that you just need to face who this is and their energy and then make a decision, right? But at least face it. Let's take one more. The page of swords. So for many of you, I feel like what you're really doing is you're finding your own voice, your own truth. And you're not allowing the people or person in that five of swords who really is carrying, let's just say lower vibrational energy. That is blocking. Well, you know, you're blocking this potential rebirth. But they're also, you know, it's because of this energy. I feel like I just need to face it. And then live my own truth. I could see some of you definitely like learning how, you know, to me, the page of swords is really learning how to communicate. I could definitely see this energy as someone who's like, you know, learning to write. Maybe I want to write a book. Maybe I become a speaker. But this is about your own truth. And, you know, I feel like the fine art of communication. But it's coming over the magician. You know, this is also... This feels a lot like the last reading where if I expect who's ever in the five of swords to change, I just don't feel like they do. I feel like you do, though. And how can you have that change? Ripping off that blindfold, facing, facing the truth, but also understanding that your spiritual team stands behind you. You know, so again, that blindfold. It's very temporary. Whatever it is I need to face, I feel like I face it and then I get moving. I get into the magician's energy and I start manifesting. I feel like your voice is important. And I feel like you are starting to recognize that and using that voice Potentially, well, really to create whatever it is you want to create. You know, a lot of Leos in my life are very creative. Um, like, you know, I like a lot of them are songwriters, you know, write lyrics, um, but also the music. 
Um, so I could definitely see that. You know, I could see writing a book. I don't want to put any limits upon it, but I can see that. Not only can I see it, I feel it. But I feel like it's whatever you want to do. So rip off that blindfold. Trust what your intuition is telling you, what your spiritual team is telling you. Allow yourself to have this rebirth, even if you're uncertain, like, okay, well, you know, how far will this go? Well, the magician, you know, the magician, again, working hand in hand with divine. Well, the magician's right next to divine. Right next to your spiritual team. And you're connecting. Some of you, you know, you're on this spiritual quest now. And um, I feel like you've learned a lot. And now you're potentially helping others through your own voice. It feels powerful, to be honest. It feels quite powerful. Okay. Go below. And you know what I want to do? Um, I do want to take a second and I want to pull back these major arcanas. I did not mean to put them in the pal because I want to keep using them. Okay. But let's go ahead now and give them a couple shuffles. And we're moving to Virgo. Virgo, my fellow Virgos. Hmm, the devil. The devil. Um, again, card of Capricorn. But it can talk about temptations. It can talk about, you know, something that keeps tempting me back. Could literally just mean a Capricorn for some of you, though. We have the Eight of Pentacles. Well, I love that for my fellow Virgos. You know, to me, the Eight of Pentacles speaks about, first of all, it's an eight, so it's a new beginning. Um, but it also speaks about, you know, not being afraid to, let's say, start something new, um, going in as the apprentice. But this really is the energy of, I feel, like becoming the master teacher. This can also answer a question, you know, will I be successful at something? Well, if I put my effort in it, the answer is yes. We have, hello, Ace of Wands, inspired action. And then, well, hello, Four of Wands. So this is the marriage card. I call it the commitment card. Right next to the Ace of Wands. Interesting because with this Eight, the Eight of Pentacles, which really is your energy. Hmm. You know, I don't know why I'm picking this up, but I feel like some of you have learned how to deal with darker energy. And you may do it as a living, but it may be because you yourself have gone through this darker energy. You know, it reminds me of like um, the shows that are on the Discovery Channel now, like the Ghost Hunters or the Ghost Adventurers and those type of shows where like, and I'm not recommending this, I'm just saying it's it is reminding me of that. Hello, star again. It's like the theme, a theme. Hope she dreams your wishes. But it's being truly who you are. And I kind of love that with the Eight of Pentacles. Again, if I'm creating anything, like, be yourself. 
Be yourself. Even if like a hundred million other people do it. Be yourself. And then look at this, the two of wands. Some of you, if this relates to love, and I feel like it's relating to two different things. I do feel like it's relating to how you make your money, but I also feel like it's also relating to love. So the two of wands is the willingness to step into something. You know, it's not a fear-based energy. It can talk about that you're out to walk down the path of the wands. Well, that's desirable. That's passion. You know, and I feel like first and foremost, it's passion for what you do. Even again, if I don't know everything that I think I need to know, you know, it's like I get a lot of tarot readers who are starting new channels. And I remember starting my channel in the fear of it, right? Like, ah, I don't think I know everything I should know. And I didn't. I didn't know what all the meaning of the cards were, but I did it anyway. And I trusted my intuition. And eventually, I learned all the cards. But it's interesting because, you know, yes, I do use the meaning of the cards, but I trust my intuition over, like, really what it means. You know, I also feel like, be careful that, well... It depends on you, um, you know, finding that balance between work and play. I feel like I want to go right in between with the King of Cups. King of Cups. Interesting. I'm saying interesting because I don't know why, but I'm not feeling really happy about this King of Cups. And the person in the Two of Wands has their back to this king. So this could have been a king that was in my life, you know, it reminds me of like my ex-husband who, um, you know, loving, well, to everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and then that Ace of Wands over it. Listen, I feel like if there's any anyone who, especially with the devil here, if there's anyone who um, is doing things, let's just say, of a layer of vibrational energy, I feel like you're going to know it. I feel like that's what the Ace of Wands is. It's going to let you know. And I really don't feel like I was married to this person. I mean, you could have been. Um, but I feel like this is about starting a new path, a new beginning. And it is leading to that four of wands. You know, I feel like what it's saying is make that commitment to yourself first. You know, to trust in my own abilities to begin something, even if I don't know where it's going to end. You know, allow yourself to be surprised. Just allow that to be like a surprise to you. The star, it does mean a wish is coming true. Right. But it but it does take your action. And that's what the Ace of Wands means. Inspired action. It's like your spiritual team sending you the signs. You know, it's just like with Tarot and how my whole spiritual journey opened. It started with something piquing my interest and then I couldn't get enough. I had to learn more and more and more and I'm still learning. You know, but ultimately I feel like. It is you becoming the master teacher. And it's interesting because the Eight of Pentacles is looking back, the person in the Eight of Pentacles. So I feel like this potentially is talking about two dreams coming true. And one is maybe a love, really, for what it is you're about to do. And then maybe finding a love just so happens to happen along this journey, this new journey. Two of Wands is just like, just take a step forward. The rest will reveal itself. Same with the Eight of Pentacles. Be willing to be the apprentice and the rest will reveal itself. Know who is living in layer of vibrational energy and can that affect me? Of course it can. It's like this is about really taking chances on yourself. You know, taking chances on like how your intuition is going to be peaked. 
but I feel like the dream is already here. The wish is already here. Now I just need to trust myself. And again, I don't need to know everything. And I feel like as this relates over at the Four of Wands with the Two of Wands, it's just taking a step into it. So if it's talking about new love, and in a way, I feel like that hasn't even shown yet. But let's say it has, or it's about to. Just taking a step forward. You know, people will always reveal to you who they are. We just need to give them the time. But this two of wands is mirroring the star. The star is coming over the eight of pentacles and the two of wands over the four of wands. Again, a true commitment. Make that commitment to you, yourself first. And then if love is going to enter your door, just the willingness to step into it. Not all, not all people are like the people of our past. And as we evolve, again, it's like the law of attraction. Well, that's, going, that's what's going to be attracted back. You know, the universe must meet us where we're at. So we must, we must be what it is that we want. Or we must trust in ourselves that even though I don't know what the exact outcome will be, if I put effort in it, and that's what the Eight of Pentacles says, if you put your focus, wherever you put your focus is what you're going to grow. Okay, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. All right, Libra. I think I'll give him a shuffle each time. Libra. Wow. How ironic. The devil again. Hello, Ten of Cups. House of love, house of harmony, joy, laughter. The Four of Pentacles. Also beautiful energy of working from home. Hmm. And then the Ten of Wands. Interesting. You know, I really love this image because I feel like it explains the Ten of Wands better than any other image that I've seen. This is literally where someone is leaving a mountaintop, right? There's nothing left for me on that mountaintop. I'm taking what I can carry and I'm heading on to the next adventure. That could also relate back to the devil. Sorry, Capricorn. Though, again, it can be Capricorn. But this is the ending of something. But it's because you chose for it to end. You know, it's a, it's a period of time where it, it's like either a lot of responsibilities on your shoulder, shoulders or you put all the responsibilities on your shoulder. But I feel like it's a very bold move at the same time. Like, I feel proud of her. Hmm. Three of swords over that ten of cups. So something didn't work out in that house. You know, and it could certainly signify with the ten of wands that, you know, unequal give and take. This can talk about a repeat pattern. You know, I always know, like, here I go saying, you know, I always see the three swords in this heart. And I feel like many times it can be a re repeat, appear, uh, repeat, um, what do I want to say? Experience. But the Ten of Wands... To me, it feels like you're saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. But this six of wands. 
victorious. This is where the spotlight is on you. Just as it was always meant to be. You know, Libra, I feel like I feel like you've given probably someone many opportunities to let's just say come around to living live in a loving heart. But unfortunately, I don't feel like that's what you found. Now that's real life. You know what I mean? Not everyone is going to love us the way we deserve to be loved and us them. But this is putting you back into victorious energy where the spotlight really is on you. This is about success. Oh, interesting that I pulled that from the top. Well, hello. Ten of Pentacles. You have three tens in your reading. Ten of Cups, but with the three of swords over it. So that didn't work out. The Ten of Wands. I've had enough. I'm going to find my new mountaintop. Well, here's the mountaintop you're finding. The Ten of Pentacles. House of Abundance. Again, beautiful energy of working from home. And it doesn't even have to mean like, you know, all my work is done from home. But maybe like when I'm home, I'm receiving like ideas and epiphanies and I'm putting them to use. You know, I don't feel like um, this means that you're alone. It's just a different house. It's a different type of house. I feel like the Ten of Pentacles is really the house of loyalty. And I feel that's important. Because chances are I didn't get it in the Ten of Cups. She's looking over at that Ten of Wands. Almost like, should I or shouldn't I? Should I leave this Ten of Cups? Three times, you know. It's like three strikes and you're out. But the knowing... And maybe you don't know this yet, right? Because again, this person is moving from this mountaintop, but the willingness to go find this new mountaintop, you know, this isn't the only mountaintop that's out there. And then victory right in between all of that. It is through that action of leaving that mountaintop that eventually you arrive in the Ten of Pentacles energy. It is through your effort. You know, victory and success is about, you know, the things that you've done. And the spotlight is on you. And not only that, but then it moves into a very abundant type of energy. Interesting is the devil keeps showing. And the devil can certainly represent temptations. Maybe i just been tempted back to someone. Again, I wanted that Ten of Cups to work out, but unfortunately it didn't. And I have to just have that realization. It's like this person in the Four of Pentacles is looking over at the Ten of Wands. Her back is to this Ten of Cups now. And I feel like part of the victory is her just saying, her or him, just saying that, you know, what's ever in this Ten of Cups just wasn't working out in my favor, but that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that I can't have a good life. That doesn't mean that new love isn't out there. It doesn't mean that I can't myself have success. You know, and I also feel a lot of times when, like, we're in between it's not wasted energy. Many times we're creating something, like we start to receive epiphanies and what have you, and then we put those to use. And next thing we know, we're in the Ten of Pentacles energy, abundance. It's an energy that can truly take root. Leaving one mountaintop, but you're heading right to the Ten of Pentacles. Leaving the Ten of Cups, you know, sad, but in the same breath, look where it's moving you to. It's like a change of houses. But in this house, it really is loyalty. It's a house that takes root. 
Okay, wow. All right. Scorpio. Star just popped out. Please don't be the devil again. Well, the tower. The tower. Okay. So the tower means disruption. You know, something has ended. But sometimes I feel like it's our spiritual team. You know, making us feel uncomfortable in a situation, but so that we can move out of it. But let's see. We have the Knight of Swords. Mm, the Nine of Swords. Look at this. And the King of Swords. Look at the swords. First of all, we were just talking about like your mountaintop, like Virgo's ma or uh, Libra's mountaintop or somebody's. We were talking about reaching a mountaintop. I feel like the King of Swords definitely has reached his own mountaintop. It's interesting because I'm getting this feeling, you know, well, first, let me tell you what the cards mean. So the Nine of Swords is worry. Yes. But the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. And something may have ended. And maybe I didn't really want it to end. Maybe I didn't really wish for it to end. But maybe in the long run, it is going to serve you. Because I feel like, again, this Nine of Swords is unnecessary worry. And you have the Knight of Swords over here. And he looks like he's in a rush. Right? He wants to jump on his mountain bike and potentially communicate with you. Some of you could be reconnecting to someone you already know. And you could have just left a relationship. You know, the tower. Someone's fallen from grace in the tower. And the Nine of Swords, I could have been in the energy of sadness for a while. You know, what's also interesting in the Nine of Swords is look at all the blackbirds, right? And that's kind of the symbol of the worry. Look at the beautiful white doves. It's like the light will get through. Nine is about reflection. But it's final reflection. But here, I'm just, I need to understand, like, what is, you know, what am I worrying about? Maybe someone didn't love me the way I had hoped. But this King of Swords is looking right back at you. And I feel good about this King of Swords. You know, I can normally tell within a reading just by, I don't know, touching the card. If this is something I need to be leery about. But I feel good about this king. Now, it doesn't have to be an air sign. But I feel like this is someone who's had their own challenges. And has climbed this mount. And has reached that mountain top. And this knight of swords feels like communication that's coming towards you. But I kind of get this feeling like... Um, it reminds me of like social media where I may have had, you know, put under my status that I was in a relationship uh, and then I change it to single and someone else takes notice like, oh, here I come to save the day. Now, they're not coming in to save your life. We need to save our own lives. But at the same time, I feel like this is someone who's taking notice of a change of status. Keep in mind that that Nine of Swords is unnecessary worry. 
we have Page of Pentacles. We have the Eight of Cups. Okay. You know, to me, it feels like I can look at what's causing this worry as, first of all, I feel like it may be something that I didn't really ask for. Maybe it's something I wanted to work out, but chances are it just didn't. Um, whether it be someone else like gave you the tower or whether it was the universe making you very uncomfortable so that you could ultimately make this move. I feel like you do. And I love the Eight of Cups. And the reason why I love the Eight of Cups is this is really where I'm examining my emotional house. I'm really looking at the cups that have knocked over. I don't need to inspect every cup. Some are just free will choices. You know what I mean? Like, I just need to find that emotional clarity within myself. And this person is walking away from these cups. And where are they heading? To the Nine of Cups. Inner harmony but also fulfillment of a wish but inner harmony even after the tower page of pentacles could tell you for some of you this could have been like a karmic lesson or just a lesson let's just say a lesson you know another way of saying is there's something that you've learned maybe it's learning your own value Maybe someone made me feel like I wasn't good enough. But again, that's their limited viewpoint, right? Because I feel like this king over here, boy, he's looking at you like, like, I know how to help you. I know how to help you. The strength card. So I feel like this king, again, has climbed his own mountaintop you know, has reflected upon his own challenges and has learned how to overcome them. And now, in some way, I do get this feeling like he's going to help you. Two eights back-to-back, -back, by the way. Kind of talk about two new beginnings. Again, eight is the number of infinity. You know, nothing happens on this earthly plane that probably hasn't already happened. You know what I mean? Like uh, on a soul level. And if we, we remember that our soul really is here to learn these, ex to learn through these experiences so that we can evolve, it kind of takes the power away from the tower. And I also feel with the Eight of Pentacles or the Eight of Cups over this Knight of Swords, Nine of Swords, sorry. The, the day will come where, you know, I feel like I'm going to look back at this tower and I'm really going to be thankful for it. I don't say this very often, but I do feel like this king is going to help you. I do feel like this king is going to help you. And the reason why I don't say it very often is I feel like we have to learn that, you know, we are the saviors of our own life. But every once in a while, there's someone who come in to really help, you know, heal those last broken pieces. And that's what this king feels like to me. You know, it's like, again, you know, and I'm just using this as an example, but like I changed my status from relationship to single they see it, they hear it, maybe they hear it from another, and boom, they're on their way. And it may start as some type of communication. And I feel like once that opens up, like I'll look back at that tower and be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right, so that was Scorpio. So we're moving into Sagittarius. Just feel like that's it. 
Hello, lovers again. You know, I believe you had this in your reading. And um, for some reason, I really remember your reading. Um, it was a really good reading. You know, I'm not going to say there weren't some things that were difficult, but you definitely were overcoming them. And I definitely feel like you had the lovers in there. So again, a card of Gemini, head over heart decision. Yet there is an angel's influence over these lovers, potentially bringing them together. Let's see. Did I put them on top? I did. All right. King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be. Uh, you're probably tired of me saying that. You know, I love this image of this king because he, first of all, reminds me of Sam. Um, but this is someone who just feels very laid back, um, book smart, right? But also wisdom. Got this big old pentacle in his hand. I feel like his dog is like his spiritual, um, part of his spiritual guides. We have the three swords. Hello, two of cups. Soulmate. It's interesting because I don't feel like it's this king who caused this three of swords. But he's definitely recognizing that Three of Swords. And he is mirroring the soulmate's energy with the lovers right below it. And, you know, one of the things that lovers showed up in a lot of readings, I have to say. And the one thing I was noticing is how close their hands were to touch. You know, they were so close to touching. But they weren't quite touching that. I feel like it was the recognition of each other. We have the Eight of Wands, what I think about, I bring about. Also fast-moving energy. But I really want you to learn this is what I think about, I put, I what I think about, I bring about. And what I mean by that is the intentions that I put out into the universe is what's going to be met. We have the Seven of Wands. Interesting. And I want to take one more. We have the five of pentacles. Okay. So Sagittarius, it makes me feel like, um, first of all, the five of pentacles, it's something that's already happened. And it, it, it does kind of feel like a tower moment, right? It's something that usually happens outside of my control. But with the Seven of Wands next to it, defending your ground, putting out fires, defending yourself, but it's right over the Three of Swords. And I just get this feeling that this king is recognizing that Three of Swords, but I don't feel like he's the cause of the Three of Swords. I feel like more... This is about something that's happened with someone who, let's just say there was a lot of ego energy and you could have got pulled into that energy. Because I feel like standing your ground when it's coming over the three of swords, what do I want to stand my ground about? It's like, I already know what I need to know. You know, it's like this king is saying, I see that three of swords. I see your pain. And I feel like this king, I don't know. I feel like this sense of wisdom within him because it's almost like if, if Sagittarius doesn't realize that, you know, that they let, they have to let go of, again, Potentially someone who may have broken your heart. 
will you ever be open to someone who is going to love your heart? I don't feel like this king is of a negative nature. You know, it's almost like this king is manifesting you. Whether they know you or not. But I feel like this king is definitely recognizing what you've been through. You know, and that recognition, just like I said in the lovers, I feel like they're recognizing each other. But I feel on a soul level, this can talk about, again, similar experiences. Could be someone who's like watched you go through this energy. And was just waiting for you to be like, enough is enough. Sometimes I can defend the wrong people, the wrong energy. Sometimes I'm just so sure that this is the one. But then something happens where, you know, maybe they end it, they ghost you or what have you. And you have no choice but to move on. And I feel like in the Five of Pentacles, I really do have no choice, right? It is change. But then it's mirrored over here by the Eight of Wands. But I feel like it's more this king. So I feel like this king, like, whether he knows you, is saying, like, I just know you're my soulmate. But there was nothing I could do until this previous energy ended. And then it does. And again, I may not have wished for that, but I often feel in the Five of Pentacles, maybe subconsciously, I am wishing for that. And don't forget what I often feel in the set in the Five of Pentacles is because it is change, I do feel like it's moving you towards soulmate energy and not just in love, in all different forms. But this, my friend, is love. So this king, again, I feel like is just sitting back. It's like he's comfortable in his own skin. He's wise. Um, you know, I feel like he's learned how to use the fine art of, of um, the law of attraction. And what he's attracting is you. And boy, do I just feel like it is, you know, I kind of feel like this will be it. And this, again, is one of those energies where the day will come. I'll look back and be like, thank God. You know, someone again may have given me a tower, but one day I'm going to thank, I'm going to thank God that that tower happened. It reminds me of a Chicago song. And I can't remember all the lyrics, but what it really talked about is if, and it's, you know, it's a guy singing and he says, if she hadn't have cheated, I never would have found you. If she hadn't cheated, I never would have found you. Now, could be the other way around, but. And to me, what that means is, you know, what was once like unbelievably hard really only le only le um, leads me to what feels like undescribable type of love. And that's just how I feel. Okay, well, Sagittarius. I get it. I get it because um, it is reminding me of your monthly reading. All right, Capricorn. I should see how much time I have. I seem to always, when I do these all signs, I seem to always cut Pisces short because I run out of time. So I'm trying not to run out of time. Capricorn, the high priestess, your intuition. You know, I have to read the high priestess as, 
like one of the mentors to the full. And when I say the full, you know, someone left me a comment and said, you call me, why are you calling me a full? I'm not calling anyone a full. I'm saying we're all the full when we start on new journeys, right? And it's about the energy of the full. The full learns to leave the past in the past. Um, and the full meets these mentors along this next journey. And the first one is the magician. Magician teaches the full. You have everything you need to be successful, right? Just gain the wisdom of the past, but don't bring the pain and the hurt with you. And the second mentor the the full meets is the high priestess. And the high priestess is a reminder to the full. I am your GPS in this lifetime. I am here to guide you. And that you can trust. All right. Look at this. The devil keeps making a um, an appearance, but here's your major arcana. Well, hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. Look at this. The eight of wands. Interesting, Capricorn. Interesting. I can't help but feel like this is love that is knocking at your door, so to speak. You know, it's literally like you have your hand out. You're reaching out. And the high priestess is answering you. It's like the high priestess is guiding you the direction to go. Nine of cups. Beautiful. So first and foremost, this is inner harmony. Um, you know, this is also Scorpio energy. This is also fulfillment of a wish. And the high priestess is guiding you right to it. You know, you yourself may have ha may have had some temptations you needed to overcome. Um, just to make you ready. Right. And again, finding that inner harmony within yourself. This is when I'm really enjoying my life again. After a period of time where maybe it was been rough. But then it is also a fulfillment of a wish. Well, I keep going for that deck. Nine of swords. Interesting. Two nines back to back. The ace of swords. Hmm. I feel like some of you may be questioning, you know, this may be what you're saying. You know, I'm happy where my life is at right now. I've overcome a lot. I have found this in, inner harmony. And it's almost like the high priestess is introducing this lover into your life. And it may throw you in this state of fear. Like, wait a minute. That means that my life is going to change, right? I'm going to go from single to not being single. Am I ready for that? Well, I feel like only you can answer that question. And it doesn't, you don't even have to, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Though the Ace of Swords is my yes card. And it is coming over the Ace of Wands. You know, the Ace, the Ace of Swords, it, to me, is communication, yes. But it's also truth integrity you know it's like your spiritual team is guiding the right person to you but will you trust that will you believe that and i feel like simply the, the question here is do i want to change my lifestyle do i want to change my lifestyle but look at the energy it's talking about the lovers so let's go right over the nine of swords Hello, world. I feel like the answer is yes. Now, of course, that's your choice. I feel like this is talking about a spiritual partner. And it just feels like it's time. But of course, you have free will. You can say no, like, I don't want to talk into anything you're, you don't want. And I feel like simply what may stop you from moving forward would be fear. You know, and maybe it's simply the fear of changing my life. 
But what if this makes your life even better? What if this really brings you, you know, you have inner fulfillment. But what if this brings you, I don't know, I just feel like to the right person. This definitely would signify it's someone who um, is spiritual. That means that they can see beyond Earth's, you know, let's just say bullshit. But boy, does it feel guided to you. That eight of wands, eights always stand for a new beginning. But will you or won't you? I feel like we're leaving this this reading with a question. And the question's being posed to you. I feel like the Ace of Swords, again, is my yes card. But again, it has to be up to you. You know, and I feel like simply what this is saying, you know, this person is in my life or comes into my life and I kind of like my life the way it is right now. Do I want to, because I feel like it would take a commitment because it is opening up a new chapter. But it's a beautiful chapter. So will you overcome the fear? I definitely think you can. But it's interesting. I feel like I really have to leave that up to you. Yet, I still feel like this person is introduced into your life. Will you or won't you? The choice is yours. All right, Capricorn. You know, it's it's really beautiful. But yet, at the same time, it's like, you know, I feel like there's no right or wrong. It's what do you want? Yet, it's almost like your soul already knows all right, I feel like it's a time it's time to change decks again. Let's go to the Universal Tarot. Give them a shuffle. And again, all these decks have been pre-shuffled. Give them a cut. And Aquarius. Aquarius, your reading for September was a very difficult reading to do. Um, but I have to tell you, by the end of the reading, we saw that silver lining. But it was one of those readings where I took the rest of the day off. You know what I mean? Like, it was exhausting. Um, and it was because I feel like you've gone through so much. But there was a silver lining. The High Priestess again. Your intuition. We have the Hierophant. Card of Taurus. You know what I noticed with this image? There's the keys to the kingdom right there. It's a five. Change. So it does ask you to question your belief system. Are you living life according to your morals? Or do you need to lower your vibration to live within another's? We have the Page of Pentacles. To me, the Page of Pentacles talks about a path of knowledge. What I've been learning on this earthly plane. Hello, Ten of Cups. You know, that's the silver lining that was in your reading. And it's interesting, we go from a five to the ten. And your intuition is such a big part of all this. Like, what have I been learning on this earth? And maybe it's about people and love, right? Because this Hierophant has the keys to your kingdom. And that Ten of Cups feels like your kingdom. But first, there was things I had to learn. And part of that was really trusting your intuition. Maybe I've been making a lot of free will choices that really haven't turned out in my favor.
Look at this, the Hierophant over the Hierophant, double Taurus. This could definitely represent two people who are on the same wavelength. Two people who are now in the same type of vibration. You know, the keys of the kingdom, there are two keys there. Now we have two Hierophants. The sun, beautiful. Cardalio. This is illumination. This is like a brand new day. You know, the sun will come out tomorrow. You know what else I love about the sun? Is if I've been dealing with, like, let's just say, untrustworthy energy, anything done in the dark will come to the light. And I can't deny it. But it's also illumination for this journey because it's also touching the Hierophant and then the Magician. You know, interesting because I feel like the Hierophants, which are both fives, which both speak about change. I feel like part of this is saying that there's been some valuable lessons and they may have been difficult, but still valuable that you've been learning on this journey called life. And one of the things I feel like you're learning is, you know, I have to think about where my own vibration is at. I have to ask myself, am I living my life according to my standards? Or am I lowering my vibration to try to be with another? The sun really illuminates everything to you. The good, the bad, the ugly. But if it's, if it's revealing the bad and the ugly, it's only to help you move to the good. And then the magician over that Ten of Cups, right next to the Hierophant, or right next to the, um, the High Priestess, the first two mentors along the Fool's next journey. And anytime you see a five, I think of the Fool, because this is about something new. And I feel like this is just saying that there is an opportunity to reflect, to reflect back, to look at different situations, different cycles within your life and ask yourself, you know, how have I been living my life? Am I being true to me? Am I being true to my faith? And if not, why? You know, answer those questions for yourself. The sun will help illuminate anything and everything for you. But I really feel like this is saying that you've been on this certain path and it ultimately is leading you to the Ten of Cups. You know, that is the house of love. It just is. It really is a house, a house of harmony. It doesn't promise that there won't be any issues, but everyone in this house works it out together. I'm really happy to see this after doing your reading because I feel like this is much lighter. But I feel like without the changes of the Hierophant, would I reach that Ten of Cups? I don't know. I feel like the sun coming out, it, it's almost like it won't, you know, it's not going to let you hide truths from yourself. But these truths are what really, first of all, teach you and then allow you, well, I say allow, but maybe more just allow you to understand that you really can manifest, you know, a good life for yourself. I just have to understand, like, where my own vibration has been, who I've given my energy away to, and have they deserved it. I feel like the two Hierophants is representing the two people who are going to be living in this Ten of Cups. Now, can also be blended families, don't get me wrong. It doesn't have to be just two people. But it is the house of love, playfulness, laughter. It is, it is joy. It is joy. And if you ask yourself, can I really have that in my life? The answer is yes. But I also have to question my own decision making, you know, question the people around me, question myself. 
and even looking at life as like, okay, really these difficult experiences were here to teach me, not to hurt me. Yes, it hurt, but they were really here to teach you. And I feel like as I learn these valuable lessons, it just makes sense that you would ultimately land in the Ten of Cups energy. Beautiful. Okay. And then Pisces. Pisces. Whoa. Pisces. Just want to make sure they're all in the upright and one went flying. Which is judgment. And I feel like I have to take judgment because it literally flew off the table. I know some trail readers don't accept cards to fly off the table. But to me, it flew off the table. But it's also in the upright. Face up is what I meant to say. So I feel like that is meant to be your card. So this is your spiritual team. You can literally see them blowing the trumpet, like trying to get your attention. Calling you to the present moment. Telling you there's going to be some type of rebirth or the or the availability of a rebirth. Well, hello, Ace of Cups. Hello, love. No wonder you're being called to the present moment. Four of Cups. Four of Cups speaks about potential discontentment, boredom within my own life. Four of Cups, the lesson here is learning how to use one's spiritual discernment as it relates to, literally, a cup coming in. And I often feel like it's coming from the hand of God, especially with judgment right below it. Right here comes this cup. I'm not so satisfied in my life as it sits right now. You know, in this cup, it's right by the Ace of Cups. It's not on the other side of the card. It's literally right by that Four of Cups or right by that Ace of Cups. And then the Eight of Pentacles. First of all, I feel like this is great energy. If um, you're thinking of starting something new, you may just find that you end up falling in love with that. Or the Eight of Pentacles, sorry. You know, Eight, a new beginning. But it's following that Four where I'm somewhat discontent anyway. Ace of Cups literally is coming in. Here it is. Judgment calling you to that present moment. Look at this, the Four of Cups again. Synchronicities. Page of Wands, my little risk taker. Take a chance on me. Take a chance on you. Hmm. And then the Ten of Swords. Well, there is where the discontentment comes from. Ten of Swords definitely feels like a pattern that wants to come to an end. And again, another reason why your spiritual team, um, listen, I feel like they really wanted to be seen. This is the past. Now, can it still be going on? Of course, it can still be going on. But, you know, the danger in this energy is I can become submissive. I can just like start you know, I think nothing's ever going to change. I expect I expect bad things to happen, and then they do. So I need to have a change of thought, a change of energy. First of all, I want to recognize this pattern of the people or person who, listen, they're not going to dissatisfy you if, if you're expecting another dagger. They're going to give you exactly what you expect. So I need to break this pattern. You're not happy in it anyway. I don't know how you could be in this energy. I 
I feel like you probably have already broken this pattern. Because I feel like other... Now, you may have broken the pattern. And maybe part of what's going on is maybe you're feeling alone. And maybe your spiritual team has quite the surprise for you. And by the way, I feel the synchronicities of two people. Interesting how I also felt with... um, Hmm. I think it was Capricorn or Aquarius. I'm not sure now. Um, But the same thing. I also feel like, you know, if I'm unsatisfied with my life, let's say in a few different areas, I feel like this is also an opportunity to do something, to create something that I do feel like will bring you joy. I feel like if I'm questioning this Ace of Cups, like, how do I know it's going to be successful? It wasn't before in the Ten of Swords. First of all, it feels like it's a different person. But the Eight of Pentacles would tell you, if you're willing to put your focus upon it, it will grow. And I feel like the two, four of cups are two people who've been through similar type experiences. And I love the page of wands here because I feel like, again, this is my risk taker. And he's looking right at that Ace of Cups. I feel like I just want to follow that 10. Look at this. Look at this, a soulmate. It feels like two soulmates are going to are going to find themselves are going to find each other. But your spiritual team has so much to do with this. It's like you're going to be guided to each other. And this is energy of like vibration. That's why they're looking eye to eye. You know, you want to see someone's souls look someone's soul look them in the eyes. Ten of Swords energy, I may not even believe it's possible. But once I break that pattern, even if, again, I may be a little unsatisfied with the way my life looks now, your spiritual team is like, but we have something new on the horizon. And soulmates, I feel like they plan to come together at certain times. You know, we don't want to, like, look at this Ten of Swords and be like, how stupid was I? Because truly... I feel like all the experiences we have are so meant to have. There are valuable lessons within this. And I feel like once you deal, let's say this is talking about someone that you loved, who literally kept putting dagger after dagger in your life. Once you, like, you see it for what it is, I feel like you're not going to repeat it. It could have been a repeat pattern. But I feel like once you break that pattern, then you have that true recognition. You know, it could simply mean that you have broken it. You have broken this pattern. And maybe you do want love to come in sooner versus later. And I do feel like it's saying it's on its way. But I also want to say, you know, during this, let's just say down period, down period though, you know, I think there's a diff- better word for that. Um, don't be surprised, like, if you yourself start getting all these epiphanies and creative ideas, and, uh, because it may not just be discontentment within love, I do feel like that's one area, but it could be discontentment also with what I do in the world. So don't be surprised if, like, your spiritual team piques your interest. And again, I also feel like the Eight of Pentacles answers a question. Can I be successful in this love? As long as you're willing to put your focus, as long as both people put their focus on it, well, I just feel like it's meant to be. I just feel like it's meant to be. But listen, I feel like so is the Ten of Swords. And I know that's hard to hear, but I feel like this it's taught me so much. First of all, it's taught me a lot about myself. But it makes sense that the soulmates will come out because, again, very like-minded energy. It's like you may have a conversation with each other and um, may find very similar experiences. I mean, love. Spiritual team, they wanted to be seen. They're blowing that trumpet. 
calling you to the present moment. I don't feel like this is saying this is like way out in the future. First of all, you know, if you feel like you're still in that Ten of Swords, you need to recognize it as a repeat pattern. Like maybe I'm just, I keep like allowing someone to get away with something that I need to know I deserve better. If your interest is peaked towards like a certain, let's just say creative, you start getting these creative ideas, follow them. Because this could change your whole life. But boy, I feel like these two, they're meant to be together. And these two have been through, I feel like, similar experiences. And my page of wands right in the middle, my risk taker. I'm not going to let fear stop me from the potential of what can be. You know, this Ace of Cups, I have a feeling, um, well, you're definitely soulmates. And as soulmates, you know, you've loved before and you'll love again. You'll be connected for eternity. But I often feel, you know, before we came to Earth, there are certain seeds, certain experiences that our soul wanted to learn. And they're not all easy lessons. Probably the majority of them are not. And it's almost like the reward, right? We're coming in at each other's lives right at the right time. Feels like divine timing here. Okay. Well, we got through all the signs. So let's now take Mother Mary over everyone's reading. Get her beautiful words of wisdom. Really for everyone. Let's give him a cut. Children. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive changes for them and me. Children. Watched over. One of my favorite messages, watched over. I allow myself to feel safe and enjoy my life, knowing that heaven is watching over me and my loved ones. Tenderness. This is like the Empress. I am both gentle and powerful. Gentle and powerful. And last but not least, probably one of the most important energies to be in to really help manifest is gratitude. As I notice and appreciate my blessings, I open the door to more of God's gifts. Tenderness. Children, watched over, tenderness, gratitude. Amen. And I'm going to leave it there, guys, before I run out of time um, with my camera. Um, I thank you all. I love you all. Don't forget to watch your monthlies because, um, I don't know, you let me know uh, how it, how you relate back to, the, um, to your monthlies. Um, yeah. I'm going to let that be, guys. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Happy September, everyone. It's right around the corner. And, you know, when I say happy September, I feel like that's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of, of the energies that want to open up. So, anyways, I love you. I thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.